Thanks for joining us. This is our extended discussion with Chris Cassidy, the Director of Operations at GNGF, or Get Noticed, Get Found. The first part of this video is from our GNGF Live, which happens every other Wednesday over on our Facebook page. The second part here, in this bonus extended interview, Chris dives into specific marketing strategies and tactics that they're using with our clients to optimize for trends that they're seeing as we finally begin to overcome this COVID pandemic. If you already saw the live, I'll put the timestamp to the exclusive extended interview below. And be sure to like and subscribe though, to follow along with all of our great conversations on legal marketing and the business side of running a law firm. And to watch this video on the platform of your choice, you can find everywhere we stream over at gngf.tv. Welcome to GNGF Live, your bi-weekly Ask the Experts about all things law firm marketing and business growth. I'm Mark Homer, author of Online Law Practice Strategies and founder of Get Noticed, Get Found. On this show, we focus on the business side of growing and running your law firm. So I'm excited to be able to bring on Chris Cassidy, who is our Director of Operations at GNGF. Chris runs the entire client delivery team here and even still works with a few clients. So he sees a lot of the trends happening in law firm marketing in real time, and he pulled together some marketing trends and the data to support uh, that he, is, he and his team are using to help our GNGF law firm clients. As always, be sure to like and subscribe to our page, not just the video, so you can get updated when our next episode goes live. And of course, it never hurts for you to show just a little love and hit that like button on the video too. It really helps us with the Facebook and YouTube algorithms. We've got moderators in the chat, so please ask any questions and interact during the premiere. If you're watching this in the future after the premiere, we do monitor comments and we'll reach out to our guests and answer any follow-up questions you have. That's because we love you all and we love getting to meet you online and in person. So you can find a list of our upcoming webinars and events where we'll be speaking on our website at gngf.com slash events. And on weeks when we're not premiering an interview, we typically drop a video as part of our GNGF tip series. And these are more in-depth videos focusing on one topic at a time. Check it out on our YouTube page or by heading over to gngf.tv. You can watch our latest video, well, after this interview, of course, at that link in the chat. Check them out. Like I said, we drop a new GNGF tips video Friday, uh, every other Friday. All right, let's get to the interview. Chris, thanks for joining me today. Of course, happy to do it. So really appreciate it. I mean, you, you had put, put together, well, I mean, I think your team did a lot of the data crunching. Um, so I'm not gonna like, take all the credit, Chris. <laughs> but uh, you guys put together uh, a whole bunch of you know, data and charts and kind of pulled some stuff together in terms of what you guys are considering some trends based on the data from last year and where we're heading into this year. I know you guys crunch a lot of the data all the time to figure out what we're gonna do for our clients. This year, I asked you to come on and kind of, hey, do you mind talking about this on our GNGF Live for everybody else to hear? I think there's especially with COVID and coming out and a lot of people are curious, you know, what changed last year, what I need to do different this year. Um, so I, I know you sent a slide deck and I, you know, we're not going to be able to just share this right here on the GNGF Live, but maybe our awesome, you know, production editor here, uh, Daniel behind the camera uh, can pull in some of the key slides as we're talking and, and this before we stream it out. Yeah. Awesome. So. I've got uh, first thing you talked about uh, was this Clio data versus um, that, you know, some data that we saw. And before we go there, I w like something that, you know, I've been saying, I talked about last year a lot is uh, when people were asking about well, what do I do for marketing. Um, we were saying, hey, look, don't forget about all the case studies and all the data out there that says, you know, it always feels like, you know, you don't need as much marketing as you do when everything's going well. It's when things start going wrong way is when marketing becomes even more important, right? Like rising tide, rise all boats. So it's like, well, did my marketing really change change things? Um, and there's the, the example I always give of Kellogg's and Post that when the Great Depression hit, and, and this is a funny story, right? Pe people didn't really eat cold cereal before, you know, like really like, like the 20s, right? And so it was like a new concept, you know, having your Rice Krispies was something you just did not get up and do in the morning. You had your cream of wheat or your oatmeal, um, or probably the good old bacon and eggs, right? <laughs> so the 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 uh, thing, you know, the story is Kellogg's and Post were kind of competing for this cold cereal market that they thought was going to be a future and something new. And as the depression hit and all the you know finances were drying up a lot of companies you know they circle the wagons and say you know what are we gonna do to make it through post did that post circle the wagons cut a ton of money on marketing and sales and that kind of stuff and just said Let, let's get through this kellogg's on the other hand doubled down on their marketing and said well uh people are going through a lot of changes right now like with the depression and stuff on the other side of this let's be one of the changes that happen 
right? And out of this, you know, Kellogg's became like a household name. And to this day, I think they're double the size. I think they were about 40 to 50% higher out of the depression, but they're like double the size of Post now um, in the cereal market. And that's an example from the Great Depression. There's consistent examples from like automotive manufacturers. I think the Apple uh, iPhone was essentially launched right after the big dot-com crash when everybody was going crazy. They launched this, this massive new technology um, that was essentially the internet on a phone and everybody else was like running away from the internet after the dot com. So, you know, tons of examples here. I thought it was interesting that you guys were able to say, hey, Clio gave us all this really cool data, right? So tell me about the, these charts that you shared. Sure. So yeah, Clio, you know, creates their legal trends report, you know, every year. And I mean, one thing I like to do internally is look at those numbers and then look how kind of, you know, we stack up, so to speak, across right. all of our clients. Um, and there's, you know, some correlation there for sure, but it was interesting to really look at that um, this year or this past year, given that 2020 was a year like no other, right? Um, right. So yeah, the Clio trends report showed that, um, you know, right when COVID was really, you know, you know, every, all the shutdowns were happening, you know, March into April, like new matters down, revenues down, just, you know, really big decrease, you know, 30% in some months. Um, yeah, it was in this chart here shows us, right? Like it, beginning of the year, um, it showed like, hey, most firms mm -hmm. were doing better than they were the same time the previous year on revenue and matters, yeah. right? Like the, things were better and up versus uh, 2019. Yep. And then Q2, like you said, like massive drop, massive drop. And then there's some recovery uh, in your chart here that from the, the Clio Legal Trends Report, but it still was below 2019 levels, but at the end of the year yeah. for a lot of, and this is, I guess, an average across all their firms that they're, they're looking at, or maybe on their, their data and you can look and see how, how they got these numbers, but it's, it's the people that I think are using Clio and they have like a big, big network of that. Yep. So how did you compare that to, you know, what our clients did and saw? Sure. So I think the easiest thing to look at um, is leads, um, just leads that we have tracked um, for all of our clients. Um, so looking at, well, you know, we looked at 2019 versus 2020. Um, and what's interesting is that in, um, we look at like Q1, Q2, Q3, and we have the chart for this as well. Um, 2020 started off really well, um, you know, in Q1 and then Q2, we definitely saw a dip in leads um, and, right. and coming back up in Q3. But what's interesting is it was all still higher in general than 2019 was. Um, and the chart, you know, shows that as far as um, for Q1, Q2 and Q3. Um, so, I mean, it kind of speaks to, you know, not, you know, pulling back completely on marketing and, and keeping, you know, staying the course and still being smart about it, but really encouraged to see that a lot of our clients did not really see the big significant drops that I've heard a lot of stories about um, from other people and other firms. And some of this data, this was um, like, it was clients that uh, I'm trying to remember, like, because I asked you a bunch of questions of this, so I'm just going to mm -hmm. verify it for people that probably have the same questions. <clears throat> so these were clients that you had uh, in 2019, all the way through, and all the way through 2020. Yeah. <clears throat> so you were able to compare apples to apples there. Yep. So the interesting thing I saw is that, you know, it matched, you know, from Clio's perspective, you know, like their data on actual revenues, you know, leads were up in Q1 significantly, right, mm -hmm. um, over 2019. So, you, you know, all firms seem to get that, that whole rising tide thing, right? Like mm -hmm. all firms seem to be doing pretty well. Um, you know, we would assume those that marketed probably did a little bit better. But when things really, really were hitting um, and the people who are marketing, I mean, they're they're spending you know, thousands a month with you guys. I mean, you guys are doing uh, what are some like the, the, the key focus strategies that you're working with probably a lot of these companies over the past few years? Um, yeah, I mean, it's on-site SEO, which is content, link building, um, and then there's a lot of paid, you know, media in there. It could be pay-per-click, um, social ads, um, but in general falls in those two buckets. Um, yeah. That drives leads, right? Right. Like Google My Business, yep. local search, maps, search engine optimization, keywords, there's a lot of stuff that we talk with other people on, on the show. So, exactly. Um, so that the people who've been investing in that, 
the, our clients, right? Like in, in uh, and I verified this with, with some other uh, agencies too, that's similar, like people said that the people that were ranking best had the least amount of dip. Mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, so they did have a dip. I mean, it, it Q2 was a dip, right? Like people kind of like sheltered, but well, there was also courts closing. Yeah. Right. Like people didn't know what to do. Suddenly they, they were locked at home. Um, obviously, you know, we've criminal law and DUI and stuff like that. And like those disappeared overnight for a few weeks. Um, so there's still dip, but I, I do, I do think it's interesting. Like the people that invested in marketing and continue to invest, mm -hmm. right. Didn't, didn't see a dip from their previous year. They did see a dip. I mean, we all, but the fact that their business was a little bit better than the previous year is pretty nice. Yeah. 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 I mean, we were going from, you know, 2019 into 2020, things were looking really strong. <laughs> yeah. So I would have loved to see what this chart looked like, you know, if we didn't have a global pandemic, but even that all things considered still not, you know, building from nothing, like still have a really solid foundation for these firms that prioritize marketing. Yeah. And, and you summarized it here. Um, so you said that the average law firm on, uh, from the Clio data showed, so I'm going to read off the slide here for you. Uh, it says revenues were up about 10% versus 2019. And then there was a drop of 8%. Uh, new matters dropped to 30%. Wow. That's in, Q2, um, in Q2. Yeah. Versus 2019. And then the data from uh, the GNGF clients, uh, you had leads were up 55%. So, I mean, the, the average law firm revenues were up 10%, you know, like your clients were up 55% over 2019 in Q1. So like you were saying that those invest in marketing probably did a little better and that would have been a really cool chart to see if that would have <laughs> trend continued. Um, leads dropped 20% versus Q1, but they were still up 23% versus 2019. So still up. So, uh, you know, not often do you get a chance to have like a something horrible happen in the in the markets, uh, you know, to be able to have data to show the value of marketing. So I, I was pretty cool what you put together. Yeah, of course. We do you have any like anecdotal? Like uh, I'm sure there's a couple of clients that you could share. I don't know if, it, if you mind sharing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, there's definitely lots of stories and lots of memories over the last year. Um, I think. One that really stands out to me um, was one client that we've been working with for a long time, probably coming up on five or six years now. Um, but obviously beginning um, of 2020, you know, right when everything hit, you know, he practices family law and the courts are closing and he's was definitely stressed about what to do. Um, and to the point where he, you know, reached out to me and said, hey, I think I got to lay off a bunch of people, furlough them and see what happens until things maybe bounce mm -hmm. back. Um, and just as an aside, I mentioned the PPP loan and he, he like paused for a second and was like, what's that? And I was like, is, is he like, what's going on here? And I, so we talked about it for like 20 minutes. And I said, like, as soon as we hang up, like, I'm going to send you some information. Like you need to check this out like immediately. And, right. you know, I know this cause Mark, we talk about all the, you know, finances all the time. Our whole team, you know, knows our numbers and, we're entrepreneurs, we work with, you know, firms that run their firm like a business. So like, this is common knowledge and common conversation right. I've been having. So to him, it was like new at the time. So he dove in, um, called me back like a couple days later and said, Hey, I jumped on that, um, submitted everything. And I, you know, got approved and like, I'm not letting anyone go. And then the conversation shifted right away to, all right, what do we do now? Like, I, I want to keep marketing, um, which of course, something that, I encouraged him to do. Um, mm -hmm. So, and what's what's really ironic is like his traffic and leads and stuff does follow some of these charts that we've seen. You know, Q1 was okay. amazing. Family law, usually beginning of the year is a good time. Um, Q2 saw a little bit of dip, but his Q3 and Q4 of 2020, some, I think the best months they've, or the best series of months they've ever had. Um, to the point now where we're talking about expanding the three new offices and two different states. And he's just going all in to try to canvas an entire area. Um, so it was a really big inflection point. Could have gone totally different direction for sure. Yeah. And, and by the way, this is why people love working with Chris and his team. Uh, I mean, he didn't just 
do the marketing stuff, right? I mean, he's like actually he's a business advisor. So uh, I love that about the team, the fact that they're willing to you know listen to all the problems a, a law firm's having. So good job on that, Chris. <laughs> um, and if I if I remember, the, I think this is the same person we were talking about the other day uh, that you said this is the one that did a lot of uh, PPC to drive the traffic, right? Yeah. Um, you were saying that they actually end up paying less per lead for a few months because and the theory is that a lot of people stop marketing and stop spending. Mm -hmm. And so they actually were able to get a lot more leads for even less money. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't throw more money in, but we got more for the spend to the point where, you know, we're paying a ridiculously no, low amount for leads that were converting into really high dollar clients for him. So it's, it was beautiful. That's awesome. But I, it just goes to show, you know, like I, heard that story from a few other agencies where we, you know, compare notes and uh, clients who were doing a lot of pay-per-click, a lot of Google ads uh, and continue doing it through, you know, Mar the Q2 was like really that, that rough, the rough time. And then, you know, carried it on. We actually ended up paying less per lead because of that. I, I, it's a, it's an auction marketplace, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it, if more people are bidding, the price goes up, you know, there's a lot of things you can do to like, you know, maximize your price and be more efficient and stuff with quality score, all that stuff, whole nother episode. Right. But, um, people were paying less because just less people were competing. Like the, you know, the pandemic came out and people were like, Oh, well, I can't even go to court. I'm just going to pause. I need to pause all my ads. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm going to pause all my ads. And that might've been a very smart thing for people to do, but those who didn't were able to get the remaining little traffic that was out there maybe in Q2, but got it for a lot cheaper dollar amount. So, yep. uh, you know, it's that, that old, you know, if you keep marketing during the downtimes, you know, like, like good things happen. And, and the fact that he's, you know, just killing it now at the, the end of the year, um, last year into this year, uh, I think continuing marketing probably helped with the quality score, being one of the people who was doing stuff, uh, getting a lower price, so, you know, it's kind of setting a bar there for, for Google on, on those keywords it probably didn't hurt either. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we're not we're not starting over. You know, when things are picking back up, we're not saying, "Okay, now where do we go?" We just, you know, didn't stop the momentum. So it's it's been great. Awesome. So I want to make sure we get into this, the trends that we talked about. Um, so you you've got a, a few of these trends here. I want to uh, focus on this first one and then see how much time we have because I know we spent more time than we planned on that first section. Uh, so I want to make sure we have enough time here to, to get through a trend on, and give people some action items of what they need to be really thinking about this year. Sure. Um, so what's your first trend? Um, the first trend that we've come up with is um, in general, the, the way that people are finding your law firm has just become more and more fragmented. So it's not just one thing, obviously it's not a website. It's not, you know, your name listed in, you know, the AVO directory, it's those things plus 50 other things that you either know about or you don't, but you should, you should think about knowing everything that's out there and what's driving uh, traffic and business for you. So fragmentation for sure. Um, yeah. The, on the fragmentation, I mean, that, that's something, I mean, it's, it's a lot of stuff in there that's not probably new, right? I mean, like, I think it's always shocking when you show people how many phone calls came from Google My Business that didn't even go to their website, right? Correct. Like they're not even visiting your website in some of these cases in calling. Um, you've shown me data where, you know, like the default isn't, oh, go spend money in a, like a fine law or a lawyers.com directory, but there are clients that in their market, it ranks really well when they spend four or $500 there, there's an ROI on that. So mm -hmm. you're like, be there, you know? Yep. Yeah, I mean, you have Google My Business is a big one, which it, again is organic. It is local SEO, but it's not your website. Um, you have social media and all you know five, six, seven different types of channels that could you know drive business for you: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Maybe you're on TikTok. Maybe you're on something else. Um, it is real. Lawyers are are on TikTok. Um, and I mean, it, it just goes on and on. You have your directories, Fine Law, Avo, Super Lawyers, um, Better Business Bureau. I mean, right. just just go crazy. Um, yeah, depending on the market, like I, like some people are using Thumbtack successfully yeah. because it dominates or expertise.com and things like that. Yeah. Um, speaking of social media, because like, like that's uh, one of the slides you had sent me where you pulled a bunch of data. This one was a little shocking to me. And I it, maybe not when you really step back and think about it, but I think when I initially saw it, I'm like, well, that's a big change uh, from previous years, right? Like <clears throat> we always knew social media 
was growing and stuff like that. But it, versus all the other traffic, it was still always small. Even like people that did a lot, it was a few percent, right? But you saw a massive change. Yeah, yeah. So, and we compared 20, again, 2019 to 2020 for this data. Um, in 2019, across all the clients that we were monitoring for this, you know, social media traffic, you know, between five to seven and a half percent of total visits, obviously organic SEO and PPC and other things are going to be the big drivers of traffic. Mm -hmm. um, but still five to seven percent. Um, when we look at 2020, um, it's really clear that right in that Q2 range, um, something changed, right? You know, in, in the real world, right. I think social media traffic in general went up. We saw that Right. correlation here with our law firm websites um, to the point where, you know, we're pushing over 12%, which was, you know, more than double when you compare some of these quarters um, and a really big spike in Q2. And then we saw it slow down a little bit in Q3 and Q4, but still higher than any quarter in 2019 um, and still hold held true. Um, I think social media traffic in general is still higher than, you know, what we've seen historically. Um, which is interesting to see how it correlates with the pandemic. Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, people looked and said, well, well, first of all, like there's a lot of traffic, like you said, all the research uh, shows that social media traffic grew in general, just visits and time spent on social media networks. Yep. Uh, but the fact that that traffic translated almost double than it did the previous year mm -hmm. to law firm websites, that was what was kind of fascinating to me. I mean, like I said, like it makes sense that everybody would spend their time there, but just the fact that that translated actually to visits to law firm websites. And and to, to be fair, I mean, it's not like you guys did drastically different things for your clients in Q2. I mean, you you tweaked a few clients and, and adjusted. You did, I think you had some social ads going for some things. Um, and we'll talk about some of that here in a little bit. But like, it's not like you could attribute double the traffic from a couple of the little strategies you changed. You were still doing search engine optimization. You're still doing some paid ads. You're, you know, social was in there, mm -hmm. um, content driven marketing, but this was just a, Hey, there's a trend change here now that, you know, like we said, things are fragmented, but social media is one of those fragmentation points that's growing. So I thought that was fascinating. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So, I, I need to get into this, but we're running out of time on our Facebook Live, so we're going to have to do this on our on our Friday, which I was planning on getting a lot further uh, through your uh, data here. So um, we'll probably have to do a couple more of these. Actually, <laughs> we'll do a couple more uh, uh, July going through the rest of the trends. But um, you have actually, hey, here's what you did. Here's some of the strategies you're changing or things you're doing with some of the clients that I wanted you to come on and talk about that other people can take advantage of. Um, and then you had some examples of actual examples of some clients. I really appreciate. I think people like to hear that. But we got to close up the Facebook Live here. Uh, so we're wrapping up. But we'll keep going. Stick around for a second. And we will keep going and push this on Friday. And so people can can get the, the detail. Because I think this is the meat that a lot of people really want to see. Sure. Yeah. All right. Stay with me. Yep. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe to our Facebook page so you get notified when our next episode goes live. We have new interviews about law firm marketing and the business side of running your firm here every other Wednesday. We're going to keep going here in the GNGF studios and you can watch the full extended discussion with Chris and myself this Friday over on our YouTube channel. We'll be diving into more detail about specific strategies and tactics you should be using to market your law firm in 2021 to optimize for these new trends we're seeing. We'll see you then. Thanks for sticking with me, Chris. Of course. Happy to do it. Awesome. So uh, I, I kind of feel bad. I mean, this is like the meat that I think that I, I wanted the people to be able to hear. Um, so they're going to watch it on YouTube. So, <laughs> um, so the the marketing strategies, right? You, you've kind of said, here's some of the things we've changed. Um, maybe not changed, but you put more emphasis on uh, with clients through the end of uh, 2020. And now it's something pretty much you're saying, everybody's got to do this. This is something that if you weren't doing before, um, we need to be doing it. You're looking at, you know, like how do we adjust strategies, how do we fit in, in the price points, whatever. And I love that. But for somebody who's watching, you know, at home and their, their law firm, uh, let's walk through these things that you're doing for your clients that they should be taking advantage of this year. Yeah, of course. So with the idea that, um, 
you know, things are more fragmented, right? Like this mm -hmm. trend that we've seen, and it's not a new trend. I think it's just become that much more important. Um, the idea of having a marketing strategy that is, you know, multi-channel um, mm -hmm. is that much more important again, um, as we, you know, are already in 2021 and moving our way through it, right? So, you know, what that means is, you know, for example, like take a content strategy and be able to incorporate multiple channels, right? So it's, you know, you need content for your website, but then how can you use that and have content for an email newsletter or social media postings, right. or if you're going to do, you know, video content, you know, how else are you going to use that on your website, on YouTube, on email newsletters, on social media, you know, like just think about the time and effort it takes to create these marketing assets and how much can you squeeze from them so that you are in these mm. multi-channel places, right? If it's fragmented, you have to be there. Um, use all this content, put it on Google My Business so in the posts um, and just figure out the best way to push all that out there. So it's trying to get away from, all right, we have you know five blogs a month that go on our website and that's all we're doing. You know, where's where's all my traffic? It's like, that's that's not enough. It's just not enough in 2021. First off, you probably shouldn't be doing five vlogs a month anyway, but that's a separate separate uh, discussion. Um, but just the idea of multi-channel marketing and approaching your strategies with that in mind, and you'd be surprised um, how you can maximize the effort that's going into the, the marketing work. And that, that's how we approach things. If we're going to create this stuff for our clients, how can we do just a little bit more to, to get that much more of an impact, you know? Um, so. Right. I mean, that's... It's being smart too, right? I mean, for somebody you know who's watching this and doing this on their own, like it's just maximizing your time too, right? I mean, you're uh, by doing this, like you're really getting somebody set up where you're taking this and using it in all these different places. It's actually providing more value. Like you're being way more efficient with your clients' dollars, which is awesome. But for somebody, um, you know, law firm watching at home here, they they could be taking their content or, like you said, a video and creating content from it mm -hmm. or doing some other things. Right. So, so what are some examples of, um, you know, like what some of your clients or uh, actual, you know, law firm owners are, are doing? Sure. Um, I think one example that really stands out to me, um, was again, right in Q2 of 2020 pandemic shutdowns, everything we work, we work with a bunch of, you know, estate planning, elder law clients and, Mm -hmm. For most that have been marketing for a long time, you know, the, the dinner seminar has always been a, right. a staple in their, you know, their arsenal. You know, you get a bunch of people in a room, you buy them dinner, you know, you present to them and then they sign up and you get some good business. Expensive to do, but usually there's a good ROI there, right? Yeah, I mean, converts. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it, it makes sense. And, I, and even beginning Q1 of, you know, 2020, it wasn't, hey, stop doing that. If it's working, keep doing it. But obviously mm -hmm. shutdowns and restaurants closing and not having gatherings completely takes that off the table. Um, so we had one client in particular where we pivoted, said we can't do seminars in person, um, but we can do webinars, we have Zoom, we can do Facebook Live. Um, right. We have other things in place that help um, convert um, as far as like scheduling with Calendly, signing documents with DocuSign or something similar. So overnight, relatively speaking, went from a, this is something we've done for 15 to 20 years to we have to change this in the span of a couple days and let's do it. And that's what we did. And I think with this client in particular, we were ahead of the curve um, as far as, because uh, a lot of firms did adopt this, but it was more like end of Q2, beginning of Q3, like, hey, we're figuring this out. We just said, we have to figure this out now. Um, because the client needs revenue and we can't, there's there's too much there and too much of an opportunity. And especially estate planning and elder law with a pandemic going on, people obviously have concerns about their documents and everything else. So it was, it the timing worked out really well. Um, and we helped set it up. We helped with, you know, connecting all the softwares together and mm -hmm. then ultimately leveraged email marketing. So leveraged a pr pretty decent sized um, email list that the client had of past clients and prospects and referral partners, and then also did uh, pretty heavy advertising on Facebook um, to get yeah, so social media ads, email. Uh, so it wasn't relying on you know, the Google paid ads or the search engine optimization as much as it was on 
leveraging an email list that had been, you know, which you guys had helped her build over time, mm -hmm. as well as uh, Facebook ads and social media, taking some of the webinar content. You, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of content there you're able to kind of like use out there and market. Um, and this client in particular you're talking about that is, um, I mean, like literally sent an email basically saying, oh my gosh, you know, like all my colleagues are businesses pretty much closed and they're not doing anything. They can't get it. And she was having to go into the office and they, I think before they got the whole DocuSign figured out in their state, mm -hmm. like, didn't they have like a drive through thing or something? Yeah. Yeah. So they had a drive through signings, which they still, you know, have used somewhat recently as well. Um, and it works. I mean, they, they figured it out. They did, you know, for all the innovations, if you will, that we did digitally, I mean, they had to pivot and adjust in real life, real time at mm -hmm. their office to accommodate the needs of their clients. So it worked really well, you know, together and it was. Yep. And then and your team reminded them, Hey, yep. take photos of that stuff. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, so they got pictures of them, you know, out uh, doing, doing the, the signings and, yeah. and the, you know, they had like the masks and the gowns and stuff and like the handing a pen to people at the end. Cause they yeah. you know, didn't you, share the pen. Yeah. Like they had to figure it out, but you took pictures of it. Then you're able to use that on social media, which then reinforces like, look, we're open. We'll look what we're doing. Google my business posts and stuff. Right. So everybody else is like pretty much closed. And here you see them totally pivoting and out there doing business, uh, not as usual, but, you know, continue to do business and help people. Um, and I think, uh, you know, your data was showing that pretty much they sent an email out and they got client like every email that went out, like pretty much new clients came out of it. Correct. So Correct. people were still wanting this and needing it. It was just accessing the, the market. Yep. Yeah. It was, we had to watch when we sent out emails so that we knew that they could handle the calls. <laughs> so it was, yeah. it was a good problem or a good thing to, to try to solve together. So it, yeah. it was great. Which in a fragmented area, you think about it, it's like, you know, we talked about go my business, social, social media, everything, but like emails, one of the emails, another area that, don't forget, that's a great way to, to you know, leverage your past list and, and you know, referrals and, and maybe people that thought about it before or didn't really sign up, but now are ready. Yep. Um, I mean, a lot of people have a lot more time, right? So estate planning was an area where maybe maybe that was a good time for people to even work on that. Um, you had another example you were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. So we've got another client that's pretty active on social media as like a, you know, personal brand, you know, built up still, you know, brand associated with the law firm as well. Um, and, you know, business in general, obviously in Q1 and Q2 um, of 2020, you know, slower, just like everyone mm -hmm. else. But when you look at the numbers, still better than 2019. So it speaks to like one of the charts that we showed earlier. Um, and the fragmentation piece, like, because he had the brand and he really invested in the idea of, you know, fragmentation and social media as a piece of me and a piece of the firm. I mean, traffic from social media for him in particular and his firm, you know, took off in, in 2020 because mm -hmm. it was just whatever charts we showed, it was like amplified, you know, three or four times for him just because he was already so ingrained with this when more people are coming to it he just took advantage of that so and with him it's not like i want to be active on social media to get a bunch of leads and to get a bunch of clients it's i'm a real mm -hmm. person i'm a i'm a lawyer i'm a dad i'm a husband i'm at my kids sporting events and oh yeah um you're going to remember me if something like this happens to you so it's a very good balance of using social media the right way um and still having that consistent brand messaging that you know i am a lawyer but i'm also these other things um, yeah, that no, no, like trust kind of yep. factor uh, he builds in there. But I mean, you guys also, I mean, he does some social media stuff. You guys take that and then a podcast happens and then social media posts happen. I think you guys have created a whole website for all the things he does. That's mm -hmm. a separate brand that links over to his uh, main law firm site for, for things. Uh, his law firm uh, site has some of the, the, like they do some live stream stuff. Yep. Um, so they, they've incorporated social media, but they've done it and in, in incorporated in all the other places as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's, they're leveraging some of that, you know, so taking some of the content, put it on the website, there's some SEO value there. There's some link value there. Um, they're getting guests uh, from all over you know, town and getting links to the, their website where their video is, you know, where they maybe like he interviewed like a, a local high school basketball team that won the state, whatever. Well, every single mom like linked to that video. Right. And they're all proud of their kids and stuff. And now you have a whole bunch of like local, reference links going right so like the idea of he was able to use 
some content and get all this marketing benefit out of it um, was just, you know, again, it's, it's that, you know, con continually to, to remind people, you know, don't just do one thing, like maximize it. And then you know, obviously as you know, your team to, to help do it, but like for somebody else, like, like these are things people can do, right? You can find somebody on Upwork who can uh, take maybe a live stream video and create a small little video snippet that you can put on Instagram, take some of the uh, content out of that and drop it on uh, a Twitter, right? You know, and uh, get a, uh, you know, like use rev.com to get a transcription, yeah. edit that. Now you've got a either a frequently asked question or a blog post or an article, uh, extending a practice area page, whatever, you know, like these are the type of things you guys do for people all the time, but like it can be done with somebody at home and, uh, you know, Facebook live video, a rev transcription, somebody, a few people from Upwork. This is something you can build into a model. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And even though the goal was not, I want to get a bunch of leads from social media, he's gotten leads in business without a doubt. Right. So it's like not the, the number one thing, but it's the thing that, you know, obviously is very important to come from it. So just good to note. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it, you know, the client I'm talking about, um, like Morris, I, he's was referenced. Uh, we, we had a, a Je Jenny Q, you know, a live stream. <laughs> yep. Uh, she was on and like uh, talked about, you know, we were talking about like some of his examples and she's like, oh yeah, he's amazing at that. <laughs> so that was, that was kind of neat. But um, he, I mean, you, he, like you said, he doesn't really focus on the number of his social media driving leads, but he knows it happens. People reference his stuff. Yep. People reference where they saw him. They reference the fact that they've got a ton of reviews. They reference, they saw him on Google, my business. They reference, they, you know, like, Hey, what's the tip of the day mo right? Like yeah. those kind of things. Um, but we do have data that shows the, uh, you know, if you look at the conversions that have a first, you know, visit to the site or visit to something from a social media channel went way up over the past few years as he started investing in this. Yep. So, you know, like it, it works. And again, this is that fragmented channel where we saw in Q2, like, you know, double, that was really cool. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't think we have time to dive into another trend. We'll just do another video for that. Um, maybe we can get most of the the uh, juicy stuff into the Facebook live portion this time and not make people come over to YouTube. But uh, this is great. And hopefully people can, you know, take lesson on, you know, what they can do to meet this trend. And then we'll hit the, the next two that people should be thinking about and what they need to do in their firm this year from marketing perspective for that. Uh, thanks for pulling all this day together. Or th you know, thank the team. And like I said, I'm not gonna give you all the credit, Chris. I know you got a lot of people back there doing some of this analysis across MITS. All your all the clients you guys run um, mm -hmm. between two years, so yeah, uh, really really appreciate you guys doing this. Of course, yeah, and happy to come in um, on here and talk about it. I love this stuff. Awesome. Well, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Mark. Hey, what's up? I'm Josh. Thanks so much for joining us. If you feel like you learned something today, think of how beneficial it would be to chat with myself or another one of our marketing consultants one on one. Go ahead and visit our website to schedule your free consultation. It only takes a minute.